So a few weeks back, my good buddy and a great friend of the channel, Heaps of Games, put a video out about Death Stranding and how he was playing through it and just kind of having a good time with it. Now before he had put the video out, Heaps and I have been talking about the game through Twitter and just kind of, you know, just hanging out a bit and he was the one that was kind of encouraging me to pick the game up. So last year, I picked up the game on the PS4 and I honestly really could not get into the game. But saying that, I went back and looked at the PlayStation log and I had only given this game about four hours of my time. And that's what Heaps and I were kind of talking about. He was encouraging me and we were just talking about it and he had kind of let me know that like, hey, you need to give this game about 10 to 15 hours to really get into this game. So with that being said and hearing that from him and being a PlayStation Premium Plus Super member, whatever that is, you know, you get Death Stranding on the PS5, the director's cut, for free. Well, I say for free, you're paying for that service. So I went ahead and I re-downloaded the game because even though I couldn't get into the gameplay last time, I was really digging and was really intrigued by the story or what I knew of it. It was different, it was unique, it was something off the wall, and it's from Kojima, so I really wanted to like it. And my plan at the time was some point I was going to watch every cutscene on YouTube just to get the story. However, with all of that being said, you clicked on the link. Yes, this is a review, my thoughts, my experiences with Death Stranding. So if you've watched any of my other reviews, you know that I try to bring a professional-ish structure to it where I break it down over several categories. However, Death Stranding is a bit different. Being how it's so off the wall, it's so out of left field, so crazy, so absurd, so ridiculous, so crazy, there's no other way to do this review than just to wing it and shoot from the hip. So the credits just rolled and I managed to beat this game. I think my time was 42 hours and five minutes. Now I did not do any side missions, any side objectives. I just blew through because I wanted the story. And now I beat this game on normal and to be honest, it's a fairly easy game. I feel like I should have played it on a harder difficulty, but again, I just wanted the story and just wanted to blow through it. So we all know Kojima and we know his style. This is going to be a very story driven narrative of a game. So you have to go in with the mindset that there's going to be hours and hours and hours of cutscenes. You are going to be playing a interactive movie, so to speak. So you have to be prepared that there's going to be times where you may play this game for 15, 20 minutes and then you're going to sit through 45 minutes to an hour of cutscenes just learning and being thrown into this universe and really developing and growing the story. So getting some of the smaller elements of this game for this review out of the way, the graphics, well, they're phenomenal. They look fantastic. I mean, Norman Reedus is Norman Reedus. It looks just like him. The graphics are top notch. The PlayStation 5 graphics, they are fantastic. There's not any complaints, no gripes. The environments look great. The enemies look great. The cutscenes, everything is done so well. You can't complain about it. It just looks amazing. Then we have the sound, which I enjoy playing these kind of games with my, you know, I, I think it's nice. My 7.1 uh, head, headphones, my surround headphones that really make games like this that have creepy sounds that if you weren't playing with a headset, you wouldn't pick them up off of a, a sound bar or a surround system or off your TV. So playing this game with the headphones, I feel is a must. And then you have this other element regarding sound and that is a phenomenal soundtrack. There's so many songs that, and they flow so well with the game and with the pacing, the songs just add so much atmosphere to this game and it's really incredible to play as you're going through and there's just a song that just kicks on and it just helps. You might think it may ease and help the journey that you're making, but
but out of nowhere you can be attacked. So it's really fun and it's really great music and it works so well with this game. Moving on into the next category that I try to review and try to like and that's the controls. The controls here work perfectly. Now I did have several issues with some of the controls with driving the motorcycle and stuff like that but that was user error. It has nothing to do with the control scheme, the control design. It works. It's great. It feels great. It's perfect. Nothing to complain about. And on the PS5 controller with the Dual Sense, there's just elements there with the triggers that I did not get playing the PS4 version. Which, I mean, again, it just helps add to the experience of this game. I think that anytime a developer can help implement new things on the Dual Sense controller for a game, it just makes it that more immersive which is just a huge thing nowadays that you want to play video games that you can really immerse yourself in and just have an experience with. And we're at that point with technology that a lot of that's feasible, especially with VR. But now that I've said all of that, it's time to get to the meat of this review and get down to the elephant that's in the room. That's right, it's that big ass elephant that's in the room that was labeled day one that people put out on this game. And that is the gameplay. From day one, all of these major media outlets, people that review games, websites that review games, you name it, they put this label and this stigma on this game that it is a walking simulator. And that's what this game is kind of known for. When you hear the word Death Stranding, I'm not sure if you think about a treadmill or just walking, but that's what this game has been labeled as a walking simulator. And I'll be honest, I really can't identify with that at all, especially after my 42 hours playing this game. To be fair, yes, the objective is to get from point A to point B. However, with that being said, if you're going to label this game as anything, it should be FedEx employee. It should be postal service delivery man. It should be UPS guy. It should be something regarding delivering mail. But at its core, that's what it is. But there's so much more that I don't think people gave the proper time to really get into. Because I will debate with anybody any day that games such as simple as Mario are the exact same way. You have to get from point A to point B. You're trying to get from the beginning of the level to the end of the level. And I'll also argue that in Ghost of Tsushima, especially in the first chapter, you're nothing but an errand boy trying to build your army up, going from point A to point B, only for this <coughs> to send you somewhere else to go do something. Even in Assassin's Creed games, you may not be delivering mail, but you're still going from point A to point B. What do we call that? A walking simulator with a sword? No, but this game has been labeled as a walking simulator and that's just not true. I mentioned it at the beginning of the video that Heaps and I, we talked a little bit and then he also mentioned in his video, which there will be a link down to his channel and the video down below. He mentions in it that you need to give this game a good solid 10 to 15 hours to really invest and really develop the game. And now I understand and I know that 10 to 15 hours can be a significant investment in time to a game. I mean, I do game reviews. Most games that I try to review are 10 hours long or less. So me investing 10 to 15 hours just to get the game going was really a piece of commitment that I had to make sure I was ready to really do. He also told me, and I did see it somewhere online, that you really just want to push to get through chapters one through four, which is about the 10 hour mark. And now, yes, honestly, in hindsight, looking back at those 10 to 15 hours, it really feels like a tutorial section. Once you get past the first four chapters, the game really begins to shift and really takes off in a different direction that most people aren't going to expect. Now, 
I'm going to do my very best here not to give any spoilers because there's so much going on in this game and it's so out of left field and so crazy that to me, honestly, sometimes I wonder if even Kojima and his team had any idea of where they were going with it and how much was just winged. And I honestly feel like this was an idea that Kojima had been sitting on for quite a while. And I really think that he might have tried to pitch this idea to Konami and they just wanted him to make Metal Gear games. And that may have been where the relationship went sour. Again, I have no proof of that. This is just so crazy that the ideas here, to me, don't seem that they just happened out of nowhere. To me, this is something with the story here that I felt he had been wanting to do for a long, long time. But I digress. At the 10 and 15 hour mark, the game really begins to open up. And you begin to see that everything you did in the first four chapters, those elements of gameplay are now really what you need to implement to progress the game. Not, I'm not talking about the story, I'm talking about the game itself. That's where the walking simulator, whatever people want to call it, really changes and you have to use all of these different elements to get from point A to point B. And it can be a challenge. And you have multiple routes that you can go. You can go across mountains, you can go in plains, all kind of different things, and use vehicles. It's, how could it be a walking simulator when there's vehicles there? But it's also at this point that the combat system really begins to pick up. And I had heard there was some kind of combat, but there's a lot of combat in this game. It's a significant amount. And the way that Kojima does this, it's almost like it's a masterpiece in itself. You don't just start the game off like any normal third person shooter where you have a ton of weapons and you just go out and shoot enemies. But it's done in a way that by the time you get to some of those heavy combat scenes and you really start to fight all these enemies, you really feel like you're really, really equipped and not necessarily you have a ton of weapons, but it's almost as if you kind of understand what you need to do to defeat certain enemies. He just slowly, slowly builds and works on this to the point to where, like I said, chapter five, chapter six, chapter seven, getting kind of into the middle of the game, you really start to see that there's a lot of combat and you have to fight a lot of enemies. Now you can choose to avoid a lot of those, but that's gonna take you a significant amount of time where you're going to be going way out of your way. And as I mentioned, it's a fairly easy game and the combat in this, system, in this game is quite fun. It's enjoyable. I won't say that this is a perfect game by any means. You know, there are flaws within, within this game. I mentioned earlier the soundtrack, which is awesome. It is an amazing, amazing soundtrack and it's out there on Spotify, so you can just jam it. However, I also talked about how the music just kind of pops up going through the different environments, and it does. However, it doesn't do it on a level that I wanted to see. It does happen, and yes, you can stop at certain locations and play that music, and that's awesome, but I also really wish that they would have put more music, more of those songs, in just the gameplay. One of the other issues I have with this game are the snowy mountain levels. I understand they're needed, it mixes it up, it changes the environment, but they just suck. It can be, you know, time consuming. You do get certain unlockable things that help you get through it quicker. It just seems like there's a significant portion that you have to do through the snowy mountains, which I think could have been dialed back a little bit and it would have made a difference. Keeping on with that same topic, for me, honestly, I felt the last part of the game, it did kind of drag out a little bit, and that's not because of the cutscenes, because Kojima's gotta build a movie in a game, it's just because some of the later missions just kind of feel pointless. It just kind of feels like it wasn't needed, but I understand he was trying to add and develop the game a little bit more. And now I know a lot of people will complain about the inventory system where you can stack 
60 boxes or something on Sam's back and have him looking all kind of crazy and it's just extremely difficult to control him. However, there is a auto config button that will optimize your load, your luggage, so it's not that difficult to play with. And now, I do wish there have been would have been a few more, you know, utility pouches and things like that that would have made carrying things a little bit easier. It doesn't break the game. It really doesn't ruin it. It does add a certain challenge to the game whenever you select a mission. You have to identify what you're going to need to get through these certain areas. What are you going to need, whether it's a ladder, a, a rope to climb down a rock, are you going to need a vehicle? Are you going to need different types of weapons to deal with other enemies? And it helps you, you know, make decisions on how you're going to base your load and your delivery that you're going to make happen. It adds an element to the game that you really have to think about what you're doing and what you're going up against. And as I mentioned, I didn't do any side objectives because I just wanted to blow through the game get the story, and honestly put this review out. But there's other aspects to this game that you can build all of these different structures that will help other online players, which is just uh, so amazing and such a great touch that from a multiplayer perspective and a single player campaign, you can add things that will help other people. Finding faults with Death Stranding, honestly, is kind of like splitting hairs. You know, I won't say that this is a perfect game. However, I will say that the story, the narrative, everything that's going on in this game, the inventory system, the route planning, the combat, honestly, I can't give this game a number review like I typically and normally like to do, but I will say that Death Stranding, it really is a masterpiece. It's a game that is so different, so unique, and it just feels so fresh. Again, you're going to have to commit 10 to 15 hours just to get through and really kick the game off. And now I know that can be a time investment. So with all of that being said, I highly encourage, and not just encourage, but I challenge you, if you really believe all of the talk that Death Stranding is a walking simulator, go out and give it 10 to 15 hours yourself and really find out what the game is about. If you've tried it and haven't given it that full time like I did the first time around, invest a little bit of time and you'll really see that the game opens up to be something so much different than everybody has labeled. Now I agree with the heaps and the sentiment that over time, this is gonna be a game that garnishes so much love and so much respect, and it's going to be revered and reviewed as a masterpiece from Kojima. Even though it's so off the wall, I'm not sure how much Kojima winged it to put it together, but again, it's worth the playthrough. I, you know, I was able to finish it, like I said, in around 42 hours, which is a significant investment in time, but it's absolutely worth it. I believe it's a complete masterpiece and it's worth the time and it's worth the playthrough. With all of that being said, I can say thank you enough for watching. If you like the video, if you like the channel, drop me a like, drop me a comment down below as I'm so eager to talk about Death Stranding now that I just finished it. Please click subscribe and click the bell for all notifications of when the lamest dad of all dads reviews come out. As always, thank you for watching. Be good, take care, and we will see you all next time.